Hello again, uh, to the third part, um, and as you can tell, there is a background all of a sudden, um, and this is due to the reason, uh, that I did a lot of this off camera, um, I was very, um, undecided about what I wanted to do in the background, um, but the glorious thing about this, um, program that I use, um, which is called Clip Studio, um, is that there are lots of templates and, um, useful, uh, imagery that you can use in the background, so that way you can focus most of your efforts on the foreground, and then the background is a lot easier, um, some people may say that this is, like, cheating however i i disagree a lot of artists struggle <laughs> significantly with the background just because it can get very tiresome to do uh very exhausting uh it takes a very long time if you spend you can spend basically your entire time just working on the background um but i feel like a lot of these um you know these templates or these backdrops that already exist are great starting places and then as you can see what I'm doing I'm basically colorizing it and trying to make it my own um, as long as you're not copying directly from another artist um, I don't think it's a problem personally um, like for instance these templates I you know I've purchased the rights to when I uh, purchased, purchased this program. So these templates and uh, backgrounds come with this program. So if you're doing it legally, then it shouldn't be a problem. Um, a lot of manga artists, um, for instance, they do um, either very minimal backgrounds or what they do is they take uh, pictures and then digitize them um, to make them, you know, the backgrounds look photorealistic, and that's because they actually are photorealistic. They are photos that have been turned to look like cartoons, and probably most of these backgrounds that are um, in this program, which you can find in Clip Studio, um, are probably, if not directly created from pictures, at least inspired by them. Um, and further, um, something else you can do is if you take fi uh, pictures, you know, photography or whatever, you can uh, take your photos and then vectorize them, which is basically you simplify the pixels. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about, you know, feeling like you're stealing other people's art. You know, if you want to use like the picture, like a picture of a city or uh, for instance, if you're making this a story. Um, and you want to have a background of a city, well, that's going to take you ages to draw uh, by hand. So a good thing, if you want to just focus on the characters, um, you know, you can either take a picture of your own local city or something like that, and then uh, you can do mixed media, and you can actually just upload the picture into the background. Um, that's cool. I like that stuff. Uh, that stuff I think is really interesting, um, and then, or you could do uh, what a lot of other artists that I've um, seen do is where you take the picture and then you edit it uh, significantly so that it's basically just outlines, and then you colorize it yourself, or you can put it through filters. Um, honestly, I think there is this taboo behind uh, using shortcuts for art. Um, personally, I don't believe that shortcuts are inherently bad for people that have, you know, full-time jobs and do art as a hobby. It can be extremely, uh, intimidating to, you know, extremely intimidating to, you know, start 
being an artist. Um, these shortcuts, which exist, um, you know, they exist for a reason. Um, some may argue, and I may argue myself, that digital art in itself is a shortcut. Um, you know, it, it's not that it doesn't take time, because as you can see so far, this these recordings are 45 minutes long, um, three parts, and in real time it took me, I think, like five or six hours. So it's definitely not a shortcut, but it is a little bit less strenuous um, and intimidating, a little bit less intimidating too, which I think is good. It's for, It allows um, newer artists um, to, you know, to to start to start drawing and I believe that anyone should be able to feel like they can draw I think that is a huge um, important thing to like know just I, I personally believe that everyone can draw and you just have to get over that intimidation factor you know that fear factor um, and it's it's a long process I going to, you know, I'm not afraid to admit that I've had a lot of, um, training when it comes to, you know, art. I've, in my job, I was, like, apprenticed, you know, by an artist, and I learned a lot from him. Um, he was a digital artist as well, so, you know, the techniques that I've learned from him, I'm using a lot of in this painting, um, and then, uh, you know, just regular, you know, classes through university and high school and et cetera. But I don't think there is one way to do art. And I think all ways of doing art, as long as they're not illegal or stealing, um, then I feel like all, they're all valid, you know, they all have value to them. Um, and they're all valid. As long as they're not, you know, immediately just ripping off someone else's artwork or artwork, or um, you know, if if there's like you know, for instance, um, art that's been uploaded and says you know, for use with um, but not commercial, then you have to respect that um, and not use that for commercial uh, gains. But if you've purchased the materials. To use for commercial gains, which that is also a valid um, a thing to do, then, uh, you know, all to you. I think as long as you're doing it a, a legal way, then that's, there should be no problem. So, going back to the drawing, um, now that I got that out of the way, because I know I'm going to get questions, um, you know, how, how did you do the background? Like, mm, I think that's it's a it's a taboo subject that's not talked about a lot, but I see a lot in art, and it's easy to pick up on once you know what people do. Um, but so as you can see, I've been trying to colorize the picture. It's kind of like a like a coloring book page at this point, uh, where I'm just trying to get the color values to the place I want them to be. And then what you saw me do is I selected the buildings um, and the background and I put a cast over them um, because I want this to be like a sunset, um, at like a twilight period. Um, and I wanted them to feel like a cohesive part of the, of the picture. Originally, I had the bottom of the painting a little bit darker, and I still have it a little bit darker in the end, but I do end up moving the whole bottom half of the painting downwards because I um, I had second thoughts about the proportions of the legs to the torso, and so I wanted to make them a little bit longer. Um, and I did do that off camera, but you will see it in these, the, uh, the piece at the end. So for this program, I feel like there's not too much else to say besides, um, there's just very specifics. Um, I did miss a couple of the tools on the left and I'll go over the bottom ones. They are a bit specific, but not 
not 100% specific to this program. Um, there is the ruler tool, which is simply to make, um, you know, lines. Um, in, for instance, if you're doing a building, you can do one point or two point perspective um, using help with the help of the ruler. There's the text uh, beneath it. There's balloon, which is uh, specific to the program, since this program is used for graphic novels and manga. So there's the balloon tool, which basically lets you put like a tail on a, a speech balloon. And then there's a uh, correct line, which is just to make your lines a little bit smoother. And below that is the actual, um, the color uh, that you have selected. Um, so as you can see here, I was doing beige, uh, like a pinkish beige. So that is selected on the bottom left. Um, and yeah, so this is, I'm just doing the fi finishing touches um, on this painting that I've recorded. I didn't record the entire process because I thought that would just get repetitive. Um, and I ended up finishing the piece off camera, but I will put a segment of like, you know, half a minute or a minute at the end, uh, just with the one picture, um, just so that I'll, you know, I can talk about it a little bit. So just some things to point out that I've been doing now is, as you can see, there are natural, you know, bottoms to all of the, the buildings. And right now this is the bottom of the roof trim. And I want that to be in shadow because the, the direction of the light is coming from behind. So, and above. So therefore, the, there will be shadow beneath uh, the roof of the building. Um, so I'm basically just selecting all of the bottom uh, areas of the roofs. Um, and then the windows have little uh, window panes on them, which also need to be in shadow. Uh, additionally, uh, you need if the light source is coming from behind and above, then things below and in front uh, should be in shadow as well. So there's like um, sides of the buildings on the left part of the picture, um, which I'm going to be doing soon. Uh, yeah, and so I'm doing more underneath of the, the thing, the back of the pipe. And yeah, so all those should be in shadow. And I can doing that with the gradient tool. I'm just putting um, the, a manga gradient underneath. Um, basically just makes, you know, some shadow, um, a shadow effect. And at this point, I'm kind of just looking around and just making sure that I'm getting all of the, all of the pieces of the puzzle. Um, I also like to, I prefer to work in a, a flat layer. So you just saw on the right side, me flattening, um, the picture. I don't, tend to prefer to work um, with multiple layers open just because I forget which layer I'm on and um, it just turns into a mess and I don't know where I'm selecting. So I just like to flatten the image, which means putting all the layers into one uh, cohesive picture. And there are benefits and there are costs to doing this. Um, the benefit is that you don't have to really worry. When you select something, you're selecting what you want to select. You don't have to worry about being in the correct layer. However, if you want to like move the background a little bit, and you originally had it in the back, you know, a different layer, and you flattened it, then you can no longer just move the back layer in regards to the the front. So there are costs and there are benefits, pros and cons. I prefer. Um, working in one layer, like I said, but I definitely, in the very beginning, I work in multiple layers, um, especially when I'm still working on the background. Um, and we're nearing the end of this recording, but I'm going to continue talking um, once this recording is over, um, just because I only, um, I only showed so much. Um, you will notice there was a little bit of a glitch in the painting um, to the top left on the window, but I fixed that in post. Um, and yeah, I, I'd say that this is pretty complete at this point. 
say it's like 90, 95% complete. And so this is the end of the recording. As you can see, I'm moving the mouse in a very happy motion because I'm tired. Uh, I was very tired. I just did the car very quickly. But yeah, so now I want to talk about the actual uh, picture that I ended up with. Um, and this painting, uh, so I just wanted to talk about the things that I changed to it. So one, I changed her hand, the girl on the right, I changed the position of her hand, um, just because I didn't, her arm was too short. Um, I want, I always work with, um, proportions. I try to work with proportions in the beginning, but if I can't, um, you know, if I make a mistake, it's fine. I can fix it, um, in post. And then... I ended up extending the picture, um, so the bottom is a little bit stretched out, but I really, really, really wanted to make the legs longer, just to be more in proportionate with the body. I moved the girl's leg on the left over a bit, um, so it doesn't look like she's completely disappearing behind the guy in the middle. Um, and then I also cleaned up the line width. I made the line width a little bit bigger. Um, especially around the hands, so that way you can tell the hands from the background easier. Um, and I also did change the final look of the girl on the right. Um, I removed her, the necklace, the choker, and I also changed the face pretty significantly. The other two, um, people in the picture I didn't change as much. But yeah, so that's the whole piece, and I did hope that you enjoyed the process, um, or at least, you know, enjoyed watching, you know, the, the painting be made, um, and at the very, and, you know, if you took something out of it, then that's great, too, um, I definitely think there is so many things that, um, you know, artists can talk about, and, um, you know, especially about some controversial issues, such as backgrounds, and, um, inspiration and, you know, things like that. I think they really do need to be talked about, and I do hope that I can at least help contribute a little bit to that conversation. Um, so yeah, that's the whole piece, and I hope you had a great time watching it. I had a great time, uh, drawing it, um, and I'll definitely be posting more on this channel as time goes by. So thank you so much for watching and hanging in there till the end. I know it was pretty long. Um, so yeah, have a nice day, and I'll see you then. Bye.